Welcome to another Bandology interview. Bandology is a Canadian nonprofit dedicated to more music for more kids via education, collaboration, and community. Hi, everyone. My name is Lucas Redwood, and I'm the outreach manager with Bandology. I'm here with Sarah Hagen. Sarah runs a consulting business for the music industry called Sarah Hagen Media and Consulting. How are you doing today, Sarah? I'm great, Lucas. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us today. So, Sarah, can you describe a bit about your background in music? Absolutely. Um, I started playing drums when I was 10 years old um, it's to, through the school music program, of course, which was fantastic to have. And um, played in bands all through school, the school bands, the jazz band, the march marching band, concert band, all of that. And I had my own cover bands and, you know, this was the nineties. So we were playing like rock and roll covers. Um, it was great. So much fun. I loved drumming and, um, I wanted to continue it in my career. And I ended up um, doing an internship actually at Zildjian Symbols. And it was a, an artist relations and marketing internship. Um, and it was great. And I just realized that that was where I wanted to be in the music industry on the business side of things. Um, and I ended up at Zildjian for 16 years. So it was fantastic. Right on. That's amazing. So segue into, can you describe a bit about what it was like working for Zildjian as the artist relations manager? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I started out, I was in charge of events and clinics. We did a lot of clinics back then. Um, and it was a great introduction into artist relations because you had a lot of time spent with the artists, but you also learned to kind of manage um, tour programs and everything when it came to the clinic tours and all of that. Um, I transitioned into being an artist relations manager after I was there for a few years and started picking symbols with artists and listening to what they needed sound wise, um, became one of my absolute favorite things ever, like understanding the language of music and what's needed as far as translating sound into an actual instrument that matches that sound need. Um, and I actually spent a lot of time in the Zildjian factory, learning how to run the machines, learning how to make symbols, giving factory tours, which was one of my favorite things ever. Um, just the history and the production of it all was so great. Um, and I got to spend a lot of time with my favorite drummers who became my friends and some of my favorite people in the world. Um, and then eventually I became the director of artist relations for Zildjian. And I got more into like production and creating events like Zildjian Live. And um, also there was a project that we did like a mini documentary series called The Passion Project and smaller productions throughout the year as well. So what, what would you say some of your uh, career highlights you've experienced so far? I know there might be uh, very many, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, overall, just um, getting to spend time with drummers that I always looked up to and get to know them as people and become friends and family and, you know, make the making connections part, developing relationships part. That was really like the overall highlight of my career in the industry so far. Um, and realizing after Zildjian, that kind of carries on, you know, those people don't go away. They're still there for you. They're still your friends. You're still your contacts and um, being able to keep doing what I'm doing and consulting in the music industry now. And, um, you know, bringing, bringing my friends into what I'm doing has been fantastic. But as far as like highlights that I can think of that were, memorable, um, creating that documentary series that I mentioned, the passion project, that was really, really fun because it was an idea that I had. And so like seeing it come to life through a production, um, was so fulfilling, you know, seeing the end product and being like, yeah, that was, that was something I had in my head, like a dream I had. And, you know, so seeing that come to life, that was fantastic. And we filmed that with, Jay Weinberg and with uh, Brandon Steinekert. And it was just, it was just a lot of fun. Um, but those events, the clinic tours that I traveled on with artists, getting to visit different cities and different music stores, getting to know the music store owners, you know, like 
just um just being out there and making connections total highlight nice yeah it's definitely super important to make those connections absolutely and on the flip side did you ever experience any difficulties maybe with the start of your career and if so how did you overcome them Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I think, I think that's a, that's a resounding yes, for sure. I feel really, really lucky that throughout my career, I always had great people surrounding me, you know, kind of like giving me great advice there just to, um, to guide me, I guess, maybe like the people that came before me. So, you know, there were times in my career where I thought, uh, where do I go next? What do I do? Or job offers that came up that I thought about, um, considered, you know, um, those, those were kind of tough times or, or there were times where, you know, I wanted to do more or I thought maybe like I had an answer to something, but it wasn't, it wasn't my time to really like be, um, uh, in the decision-making seat, you know? So, so those times were tough to to kind of get through because um, I I just always want to be helpful and be part of the process and um, you know be kind of like a great teammate to everybody. So all of the the times where I was like indecisive about where I was going in my career or was or was this the right thing for me, I think those were the tough times. Um, I kind of like to have a path and like <laughs> hard charge it. Um, so. So I think those were probably the the hardest things I faced. Um, and, you know, there were a couple of times I found myself like reporting to someone who I was like, yeah, this is going to be a tough <laughs> reporting situation for various reasons. And everyone goes through that in their career, everyone. And I think it. I learned a lot how to just kind of like manage those relationships too and you know, get through that period of time. And um, so definitely managing relationships. I really believe it's all about the relationship at the end of the day. Um, And so I think the tough, I always like think about, it's just a period in time. If you're going through a tough situation, it always ends. You always come out the other side. So that's what I think about. Yeah, that's definitely a great attitude to have for sure. There's always a another side, especially with the uh, the pandemic too. I think a lot of people were thinking, "Oh no, like live music, it's not going to come back." And and here we are, we're thriving more than ever, which is so awesome to see. I agree. So I, I, it's so beautiful to see this again. And um, you know, I I think about the times there were, there were dark times there, you know, a lot of us and a lot of my friends just, we just didn't know like what was going to happen if we would ever get back, if we would ever see the end of this and see each other out playing live again and all of that. It's just so nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, so any exciting events coming up for, for you with your, uh, your consultant, new consulting company or, or, um, you know, maybe some of the people that you're working with closely. Yes. I work with, um, Drumeo Musora, the parent company. Um, so I do artist relations for the brands, Guitario, um, Piano, Singio and Drumeo. Um, we have some really fun stuff coming up. One thing I can't talk about yet because it hasn't been announced, but it's really big, really big artist. And I'm so excited about that. Um, other things that are coming up, there'll be a, a Cindy Blackman shoot really soon. And that's super exciting. Um, Cindy's one of my absolute favorites. Nice. Um, but it's, you know, it's been an exciting year with Drumio working with Simon Phillips and Steve Smith and Dennis Chambers and Aaron Spears and, you know, all the, all Hannah and all Grayson, like everybody, it's been, it's been amazing. Um, so that's been an exciting time, but the stuff coming up, I have some things coming up that I'll be able to talk about really soon. And I wish I could talk about them yeah, more, yeah, but it's, okay. <laughs> it's really, I know it's, it's uh, when you're doing stuff. the really cool stuff, it's right? <laughs> there's a lot of momentum right now and I'm just super, super excited about it, but well, we um, can't wait to, uh, we can't wait to check it out and see, see that stuff. And uh, I was going to say, um, 
Yeah, it's really cool. We had uh, Brandon Taves uh, do an interview with us, and that was uh, very cool. To he was getting all excited. And this was last, like in December, I think we. Yes. And and uh, he was all getting excited about. He couldn't announce what you know what all of the things you just mentioned. So <laughs> yes. you know it goes in phases, and and all the coaches this year are just like spot on like love it it's amazing like great you know it was a great coaches was a great was that your one of your ideas like with the yeah. team? that was the main project that i worked on uh starting last september yeah amazing because yeah. yeah that was that was throughout the pandemic just a great way for you know artists uh, like i i had drumio and um uh, and it was great throughout the pandemic to keep, uh, keep up to date and everything and, and watch some of the coaches stuff that was happening. So great, yeah. great job on that. That was, Thank that's you. great. Um, yeah. So, um, a couple more questions here, uh, bandology, we talk a lot about the value of, uh, music education. So my question to you is why is music education important to you? Oh my gosh. That's a really great question. Um, Music education is basically the reason why I am where I am right now. Um, I was a product of school music and, you know, I, I wanted to play drums. I knew I wanted to play drums from the time I was probably like four or five and would talk to my parents about it and tell them how I wanted to be a drummer. And I would watch every, you know, we had VHS tapes of Dennis Chambers and <laughs> nice. Carter Beaufort and Cindy. And I would, Sheila E was on MTV and I would just watch always focused on the drums. Um, the opportunity to actually learn through school was such a blessing. Um, I took lessons during school hours. I skipped recess and <laughs> took drum <laughs> lessons. Um, and, you know, I was super committed to it. I took snare drum lessons for four years straight and was, you know, it was really, really important to me because it not only provided me um, a way to learn how to read music and technique and all of that, but also like playing with other people. We had a great program. We had a jazz band. We had a combo band. Um, and it was like, it was just the best opportunity for me to do something that I loved in a time frame that was manageable also for like my parents and you know all of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I am, I just believe in it. I think it, it is, it helped me like develop into the person that I am. It helped me work with people, collaborate with people, listen to people, you know, that the value of playing with others and like really listening to what they're doing and, working together. I think it's just huge. Um, and then the social part of it too. I mean, it was the, my friends who we were in, you know, band together, we're, we're still friends and all of those band trips and all of that marching band was just, you know, such an intense thing. And it was just, um, it was amazing. And I, I encourage, you know, anyone to get into, to, to music education, um, I taught drums, drum lessons, percussion ensemble for years as well until I got really, really busy. Um, but I, I missed that too, because I loved that. Uh, and I love working with organizations who are all about education as well. Amazing. Yeah. hundred percent. That's a great answer, Sarah. Um, so our last, uh, formal question here is, do you have any advice for young musicians interested in kind of possibly maybe artist relations or, or, you know, just in music in general? Yes. Um, artist relations in particular, I'll just address that, that one first. Um, I feel like it's kind of a 24 seven job. You know, I definitely, um, we was up for that for, for concerts, any day of the week, driving all over the place, taking the phone calls, you know, super late at night or in the middle of an event on the weekend, taking a, a minute to take a phone call. Um, it's one of those things. It's kind of a labor of love. You know, you have to love people and want to help people because that's really kind of what you're doing in that job. Um, you also have to learn how to say no in a really positive way. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. but I, again, with, with artist relations, again, you know, relations being in the name, it really is about the relationship between you and the artists 
being the company representative all the time, always thinking of the company's best interests, but also kind of you're working for the artists as well, you know, so you kind of have two, you know, two sides to you. Um, I loved it so much. It's a really fast paced job. I would say anyone who wants to get into that, learn the, the product really well, because that's one thing, you know, you have to be a product expert to be able to really represent a company's product to the artists because they are the experts really, you know, they know exactly what they want down to the tiniest little tweak. And so um, you want to be able to help them get what they need sound wise, because that's the most important thing, whether, whether you're representing cymbals, drums, hardware, sticks, anything. Um, there are a lot of little like nuances. Um, and then I would say take an internship, whether it's paid or not. Um, and then kind of like, do your time learning. Like it's not all going to come at once. And I think that there's a lot of benefit in taking the time to really listen and understand the product and the company and all of that. Um, and then really just be a good person because um, it's a really small industry and, and, you know, you want to make sure that you're represented well out there and that if you move from company to company, you'll have a great reference system. So that's my advice. And then the music industry in general, you know, people joke that it's just a really tough place to be or tough place to work, you know, but um, I wouldn't give it up for anything. I love this industry so much. And, you know, you have to just navigate it <laughs> and, <laughs> and find, yeah. find where you fit in, yeah. right? Find your spot, um, find where you fit in and do the best you can. Yeah. Someone gave me a good analogy once. They said like, um, it's kind of like a, a, a box where it's like, it's so it's kind of the, the seek or like not the secrets, but like a lot of the information are, is kind of, you have to think, you know, you need to be really creative with how you, you make your way into that. But mm -hmm. once you're in, you know, everybody and like, it's such a close knit community and, you know, yes. everyone's friends with everybody. Like you're mentioning your, you know, all the artists you're friends with. So that's, that's awesome. But getting to that point requires so much. And then it's weird because it's in a box, but you have to think outside of the box to get in the box. To get in Exactly. Yeah. Because everybody wants new ideas, yeah. right? So yeah. you want to come in with fresh ideas, but, and that's a really good point. So I mentioned doing an internship, but mm -hmm. also like attend NAM or yeah. KSIC or the drum shows that are around, introduce yourself to people um, who work at the company. And I think the best thing to do is like, you know, if you, I've had so many people come up to me and say, Hey, I just wanted to come over and say, hi, I would love to work in artist relations someday. Can you give me any advice or my man? What do you think? And what should I do? And I always would tell them you're doing it. Like, this is exactly what you should be doing. Introducing yourself, making friends, making contacts, keeping in touch. Even if you just send an email and say, Hey, we met at NAM, and I just wanted to follow up and let you know, graduating in six months, had a great school experience. This is what I'm looking to do. Um, so many times I have been able to, um, you know, make a connection for someone through just that, you know, um, and it's, and it is really about who, you know, so definitely introduce yourself, get your face out there. That's probably the best advice. Follow-ups are key. Don't, yes. don't hit the, I've learned that. Started to learn that people are Absolutely. busy. Don't, don't, you got to follow up. It's don't crazy. let it go. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks so much, Sarah. So we're going to end off with our little set of fast five questions that we like to do at the end of these. Are you okay. ready? I'm ready. Are we going right. to be fast? <laughs> yeah. All right. Fast. Here we go. Number one, favorite movie soundtrack. Um, I have to go with guardians of the galaxy right mm. now. Cool. So cool. good. Nice. Yeah. Instrument you wish you played. I would love to play guitar because I feel like you can play that anywhere, Same, right? Yeah. You could just pick up the guitar, play it acoustic, sit around yeah. a fire. I know like five chords. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's where <laughs> yeah. I'm at. Um, hidden talent. I, <laughs> I can sing guitar solos. That is oh, my cool. Favorite. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I like obnoxiously. That. Yes. <laughs> um, dream vacation. My dream vacation right now is to go to Iceland and oh, hike okay. 
nice. and see the Aurora Borealis. That's what I want to do. That's very cool. I like that. Thank you. And last but not least, favorite concert you've attended? I have to go with Stevie Wonder. Um, I saw him. It wasn't just about the concert. The concert was so amazing. Yeah. This, was pro- this was probably like 12, 13 years ago. Mm. Saw him. Amazing. Perfect. Everything about it. And then after the show, he came backstage and he played and it was just the most beautiful experience. So like that was, yeah, I have to say that's right up there. Oh, wow. Stevie. Gotta love Stevie. So, yeah. so amazing. Yeah. He's an icon. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, Sarah, for taking the time. Um, Thank you. Great, great advice for everyone. And uh, like I said earlier, can't wait to see the awesome things you uh, that get released with all these cool uh, things that you're doing. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucas. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Take care. You too. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you heard, you can learn more about our organization at bandology.ca, which features information about music education, advocacy and research, and our play a gig and band camp programs. Follow us on social media for more videos, performance and interviews on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube.